here's another proof where we are going to show that the limit, let's say the limit as x goes to a of the nth root of x equals the nth root of a. Now, I'm going to make a couple assumptions here because I don't want this to be so grisly in the arithmetic that we have to do. So I'm going to assume that a is a positive number. There's a lot of usefulness for it. You can make, you can reverse the argument, change everything to negative if you want to deal with a being negative. a being zero doesn't even require a proof, you just plug it in. So let's just work in this case. So I want you to notice something here. In writing x to the one half minus a to the one half, you should be familiar with its conjugate, x to the one half plus a to the one half. And then when you multiply it out, it becomes a difference of squares. This will equal x minus a. This part right here you refer to as the conjugate. Now, you can do the same thing for a larger denominators. Say I have x to the one-third minus a to the one-third. Now, unfortunately, the conjugate is not exactly structured like I have above. It's actually this. You have x to the two-thirds plus x to the one-third times a to the one-third plus a to the two-thirds. That equals x minus a. So this time, you see the conjugate is a lot more complicated. Let me do one more so you can get the feel for it. I'm not going to keep going forever and ever, but I, I, I do want to write the general case. So if I do x to the 1 over 4 minus a to the 1 fourth, its conjugate is x. See, if you look here, the 1 third and the 2 thirds multiply together to give you x to the 1 power. That's this guy right here. And the same happens with the last. If you multiply those two together, you get a to the 1 power. All the terms in between happen to cancel out. You get exactly the same negatives as positives. They all cancel each other out. So, if you can use this as a model, I need this thing and this to multiply together to give me x to the 1. So I'll put a 3 fourths here. And my next term will be x to the 2 fourths. I'm not going to write 1 half for reasons where I want to keep the structure or the uh, pattern evident. a to the 1 fourth plus x to the 1 fourth a to the 2 fourths plus a to the 3 fourths. And that will equal x minus a. Now, if we assume that a is positive, if a is positive, let x be close enough to A so that x minus A does not equal 0, or, or better yet, uh, x does not equal 0. That's, that's actually okay for that to happen, but here's what I want. Let me just put, if you want to call it a delta, you can call it a delta, but it's very easy to do. Here's A, here's 0. I'm going to have me go from this, say, to this. Let's call that delta, delta. So if I choose my delta like that, I'll have it so that uh, x being in this range 
cannot equal zero for that. But we sort of talked about that before. If, if the limit is a non-zero number, you can do stuff like this. The reason I want that is it's not it's better than just x not equaling zero because if I'm assuming a is positive, then x is greater than zero. So I'll use that throughout the proof. Like I said, if, if we were working with negative numbers, I would just turn everything around, throw in absolute values as needed, etc. 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 So let's take a look at the case where I want to factor x to the 1 over n minus a to the 1 over n. You'll find that writing these things as a fraction in the exponent is much better than the root signs. The root signs are terrible. Um, let me do this times. So like we had before, I need for this exponent plus this exponent over here to come out to be 1. So you can get that by putting n minus 1 over n. So you can see for yourself, when you add n minus 1 over n plus 1 over n, you get 1. Just like before, we're going to start incrementing these. The next one is x to the n minus 2 over n. a to the 1 over n. I'm going to write several terms so you can see the pattern. Next, we're going to have x to the n minus 3 over n, a to the 2 over n. And you'll notice every single exponent inside of here, if you were to add these exponents together here, n minus 2 over n, 1 over n minus 1, they add up to be n minus 1 over n. All of them do that. Let me do another one. x to the n minus 4 over n times a to the 3 over n plus dot 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 plus uh, let me just write the last couple of terms here we'd have x to the 2 over n a to the n minus 1 over n uh, 2 I need I need this to be n minus 3 n minus 3 over n. So when I add these together, I get n minus 1. Okay. Um, plus x to the 1 over n. a to the n minus 2 over n. Plus a to the 1 over n. All of that's an absolute value. Now, if I take this piece here, this guy, let me see if I can lasso that. I'm not, no, I don't trust my lassoing abilities. I use my mouse to grab this thing. Let me copy that and see if I can paint. I don't know why it does that, to be honest with you, but see what happens. See, all of a sudden it's, it's like really huge. Well, since x and a and all of these things are positive, I can get rid of these absolute value signs. As a matter of fact, since everything is positive, this whole thing is greater than a to the 1 over n. That whole thing is. Because that's the last term. Since x and a are po guaranteed positive, all of these things, this whole chunk of stuff here, is simply greater than zero. So, what I have then is x to the 1 over n minus a to the 1 over n times x to the 1 over n, n minus 1 over n, plus x to the n minus 2 over n, times a to the 1 over n. I'm, I'm just, I'm going to really abbreviate this because I don't want to write that same long thing every single time. Then I'll have a to the n minus 1 over n. That equals x minus a in absolute value. So I'm going to divide both sides by this stuff. Since it's a positive number, I can certainly do that.
Now, you can simultaneously drop the absolute values on there because, like I said, everything's positive. And let me increase the size of this vinculum to handle that. Now, all that stuff in the denominator I, I handled right up here. All of that stuff is greater than a to the 1 over n. So this is less than the absolute value of x to the minus a times 1 over a to the 1 over n. So we need this stuff all to turn out to be an epsilon. And you already know that x minus a is going to deal with deltas. Let's see what we have so far. Going back, do we have? That was a previous proof, so no. We don't have any deltas so far. So what I'll typically do is then this will be less than delta times 1 over a to the 1 over n and we can let that equal epsilon. So, your job is to find the delta. How do you get it? Well, multiply by a to the 1 over n. Delta equals epsilon times a to the 1 over n. And you can see if I go back up here to the proof, let me erase the, this part. This is going to be less than delta times 1 over a to the 1 over n. which equals epsilon times a to the 1 over n times 1 over a to the 1 over n. Those, of course, cancel, and you're left with a highly desirable epsilon.